Hey all, welcome back to another episode of Coffee Fusion. One of my very popular videos from years ago was how to make latte art without a machine. I thought I'd update this guide as I recently found the Nanofoamer on Kickstarter. The Kickstarter was really successful and although there was a little bit of a delay in shipping, most of the backers have now received their Nanofoma and they're starting to become more available at coffee stores. In the previous video, I also used an AeroPress to brew the coffee component. This is capable of making like a coffee-like drink, uh, but the concentration of the extraction doesn't leave you with a uh, finished product that's like a flat white or a latte. So instead, this time around, I'm using the Flare Pro 2. I want to mention that the team from Flare uh, reached out to me after watching a bunch of my YouTube videos and offered to send the Flare out for me to try. I've played around with the Flare for a few weeks now and I'm massively impressed with the uh, shots coming out of it. The shots I've got out of it are at least as good as my espresso machine and so I've been keeping an eye on the Flare 58 which is the new model about to be released. I'm just so impressed with the Flare Pro 2 that it's probably a matter of time before I have a Flare 58. I think I'll save talking more in depth about the Flare Pro 2 for another video, so here's a quick montage of me prepping and pulling a shot. So now that we have the espresso, we need the milk to pour into it. The really interesting thing about using the Nanofoma is that you get to heat the milk at a slower speed than using the steam wand of an espresso machine. So here you can see that I heated the milk with an induction top and the flow tip milk jug. This means that the milk has a lot more sweetness and I could actually taste the difference in the cup. So now that we have some hot milk, it's time to create that microfoam. It took me a few tries to get the hang of it, but the main thing I would say is texture with the nanofoamer the same way that you think about texturing with your steam wand. So at the beginning, have the nanofoamer sitting on the surface of the milk, this will add that air to create foam. And then after five to 10 seconds, move your nanofoamer to the side and below the surface to get that whirlpool going and mix that froth into the milk. So just like with a normal steam wand, it's important when you're doing that mixing stage that you don't dunk the nanofoma to the bottom of the jug. You need to just keep it below the surface and so you can take that air that you've added and mix it into the milk. So at this point, you're ready to pour your latte out. For this video, I transferred my milk into a jug that I'm a lot more comfortable pouring with. The biggest difference between this video and my previous manual latte art video is the result in the cup. I'd happily drink this coffee every day of the week and actually I did, I put my expensive equipment away and used just this equipment for a week to practice for this video. I personally find it a little bit easier to get microphone using the expensive espresso machine, but you have to consider the fact that it's a high-end espresso machine and I've been uh, texturing milk that way for about 12 years. So far I've had about 10 tries with the Nanofoma and considering that I've only used it a few times, the quality of the milk is getting better and better. It is just a milk texturing setup that costs about $100 including the jug and for that price it's very capable. The coffee from the Flare too has been absolutely awesome. I've been playing around with it more and more, uh, playing around with pressure profiling and uh, longer pre-infusions and getting some great results in the cup. The main thing I don't love about the Flare is that the setup takes a little bit of time to get ready to brew uh, with a bit of preheating involved and that kind of thing. Having said that, if you consider that with your expensive espresso machines, the uh, 20 minute or so heat up time before it's ready to brew, it's actually pretty comparable. The most exciting thing looking at the new Flare 58 is the fact that it plugs in to preheat that brew chamber. Preheating the brew chamber is probably the most cumbersome part of the setup at the moment, um, and you really need to do it for the kind of coffees that I like to brew. Uh, so the, the having that heating element is gonna be a game changer. Anyway, I'd love to hear from you guys. So have you had any experience with any of Flare's brewers? Or have you had a chance to try the Nanofoma? Let me know what you think of them if you've tried. And if you'd like to see some more in-depth videos on each, uh, let me know what you'd like to see in those videos. I know it's been a really long time between videos, but I have some really good news. Uh, as of this week, I've left my job so that I can do Coffee Fusion full time. This means I'll be creating a lot more content like the good old days and building up my roastery so that I can earn a wage. If you haven't tried my coffee yet and you live within Australia, you can get a free sample pack when you sign up to my coffee subscription so you can taste my current coffees and see what I'm roasting. 
Other than that, thank you so much for checking out this video and I should be producing a lot more content, so click subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, keep frothing! Ooh.